Okay, here we are. Thank you for a lovely introduction there. And uh, that station you were listening to on the old radio here is KBOO FM 90.7 FM, I believe, right. in Portland. And uh, today we're here at the Liberty TCI studio, and we're talking with the manager of KBOO, Harriet Vasquez, and the programming director of KBOO, David Lifton. Welcome to both of you. And uh, welcome to another wonderful TVAP show. We're here uh, when the people at home are seeing this. It'll we can say we're almost live here at TVAP. Um, one of you, would you tell me about the history of KBU? How did KBU start? And then we'll um, get going into the present and the future. Well, we started uh, 1968. Is when KBU went on the air, and it started as a. I'll look. I'm talking to you. I'll talk right. to you. It started as a repeater for KRAB, Crab radio station in Seattle. Mm -hmm. And initially, it went on the air because a group of people got together in Portland and said there's no classical music on the radio in the city of Portland. We need to fix this situation. So they got together and started KBU Radio. And very shortly after going on the air, started doing our own local programming, uh, DJs playing records, predominantly classical music at that time. Over the years, we've expanded from just daytime hours to now 24 hours a day. We've moved our studios, what, three, four times at least. And we've also expanded our programming to take in other areas of music, culture, and public affairs that we feel are underrepresented on other media, particularly other radio stations in the city. And in fact, we've, over the years, cut back on some of the things that we initially did more of. Uh, for example, the classical music is now, there's what, five or so other radio stations in Portland broadcasting that type of cultural uh, programming. So we've cut back on that and added things that we felt were underrepresented. What, such what, as, um, give us some for examples on what kind we've of We've added quite a bit of uh, Spanish language programming. This has been something we've, in the last year, m doubled our Spanish language programming. It's now uh, five days a week, Sunday through Thursday, there's a class, uh, Spanish programs. We've added, oh, about four years ago, made a substantial increase in uh, contemporary urban black music, soul, contemporary soul music. There's no commercial station in Portland that's really playing much of that. So although were you to go, say, to Chicago or Los Angeles or New York, you'd have maybe two or three commercial stations playing the Gap Band, playing rapping music and things. In Portland, no one touches it, uh, except for one or two crossover artists. So for us, as a non-commercial radio station, that's still a viable thing to be broadcasting. So you're running 24 hours a day of alternative radio, right. things that aren't heard on the other radio stations. You must have an, an immense amount of funding and staff in the hundreds. What, what kind of staff do you have over at KBU? Well, we have a volunteer staff of a close to 150 people who do the programs and maybe now you say volunteer right they're all people like yourself who come in who might have turned on cable one day and said well that doesn't sound so terribly professional that I couldn't do that and they come down to the station and get training and they're volunteers from the community regular people and they sound like regular people on the radio mm -hmm. and then there's about as many people who are volunteers who help off the air, answer the phones, help send out the program guide, help with our benefit events. So maybe a staff of about 300 volunteers. But paid staff, how do you, do you have paid staff? Who We've got 
six paid staff six or is it seven now? six and a half six and a half six and a half right. paid staff and they're the people that do all the training and maintain the the business most of the training and a lot of the coordination there are some volunteers that have been there as long or longer than many of the staff and have just as much knowledge of the equipment and they do a lot of the training also I think particularly in our public affairs department which is very labor intensive uh, we have a half hour newscast every evening and beginning at say one o'clock in the afternoon there could be four or five people throughout the afternoon volunteers putting the news together and so quite frequently people that have been doing that for maybe uh, six months to a year will help train those new volunteers that come in uh, funding, uh, you're obviously doing such a wonderful service for the city and for the, the people of the state. You must get a lot of funding from the city government and from the state. No. <laughs> no, you don't get no. any funding? It's, from a, the it's run as a community license, community radio station. So we are not licensed to the state of Oregon or to the city of Portland. We're licensed to the KBU Foundation. and. The money comes, over 80% of our funds come directly from listeners who subscribe, who send in anywhere between $5 and $100 a year. So 80% of your funding comes 80%. from your listeners. Right. That's amazing. So you're heavily and what that dependent. does is it makes us quite independent from any right. other funding source. No bureaucracy is telling us this is what we have to play. Uh, if anyone's telling us, it's our listeners that are maybe writing in letters or answering surveys that we send out or calling us up. Tell me about the foundation, the KBU Foundation. I know we were very interested in that when we were setting up PCA and that sort of, at least for me, became a model. Can, can you tell me a bit about the, the KBU Foundation? Well, the foundation is made up of all the volunteers and subscribers. Anybody who pays money to the station, I, I believe the base amount is $20 a year, becomes a member of the foundation. And anyone who volunteers I think it's uh, 10 or more hours a year of volunteer labor becomes a member of the foundation. And to what does that entitle That entitles them to either run for and certainly vote for the board of directors. And we have a nine member board. Mm -hmm. uh, ideally, three people are elected each year for a three year term. Now, of course, everyone doesn't always serve a three year term, so sometimes more are elected or less. But essentially, then the nine member board sets the overall policy for the radio station, the general uh, goals for the station, works on the general budget ideas, and gives those directives to the staff to help coordinate and plan and work on, along with all the volunteers. But it's the foundation that holds the license to this non-commercial educational radio station. And the foundation okay. members, are they all elected at large, or is there any? Yes. The board, direct the board, the board directors. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. What um, Follow us through somebody wanting to do a program. I have uh, a group that wants to get a program on KBU. How, how do I go about doing that? Go ahead. Okay. Uh, the first thing you would do is you'd, you'd call up the station and say, oh, I would like to be a DJ. I'd like to do a show on KBU. So I say, okay, come down to our general orientation. And usually once a month we hold these general volunteer orientations to talk about the goals of the station, how one gets involved, give a tour of the building, show our facilities off. Then there's a series of workshops that people go through, training on the equipment, production rooms, uh, air rooms, the different boards, just the technical audio equipment. There's also some training workshops for rules and regulations, some of them given us by the FCC and others that we've developed on our own over just years of trial and error. Once someone has gone through those training workshops, then they would come in and maybe do some substitute air shifts. Say, well, just to get their skills up. At that point, they would put in a proposal for the program that they want to do. That proposal would go to a programming committee made up of a couple of staff, I'm one of them, and some volunteers, some of whom are board members. And we will evaluate proposals per availability on the schedule and then put people on as we see fit. But uh, if you're filling up 24 hours a day, you must have to make some hard choices between different kinds of programming. Who, who sets that sort of policy? That must be a very difficult thing. Well, I said the general goals are set by the foundation. I, I love the. Would you? And there's read, a programming charter. 
the programming charter, I, I think that's great. I just happen to have a copy of it here. Um, you want me to read it? Sure. Okay, I'll read it. This is from our uh, program guide, by the way, that looks like this. There it is. Program guide. These are available at the radio station for free if you'd like to come down 20 Southeast 8th. They can also be picked up at some record stores and uh, places around the city. And certainly if you become a subscriber, we'll mail you one, no problem. Let me interrupt you there. If somebody wants to be become a subscriber, they could send, just send their $20 to? KBOO, 20 Southeast 8th, Portland, Oregon, 97214. Or call us at 231-8032. And now I'll read our programming charter. It says, KBOO will be a model of programming filling needs that other media do not, placing a priority on providing a forum for unpopular or obscure subjects across the political spectrum, and seeking out controversial or neglected perspectives on important issues. KBU should strive for spontaneity and diversity of programming, which will reflect easy community access, strive for excellence, both in content and technique. And that's... That's terrific. That's... Charter. Um... Gee whiz, I, it, it, the similarities between that and what we're on now, right. cable access. Right. And, and so as you mentioned, someone comes in wanting to do a program. Right. If someone comes in and says, well, I want to play uh, heavy metal, you know, I want to do a heavy metal rock show, mm -hmm. and they might even have a decent justification, which I've heard, is that no one in Portland is doing much of that right now. KGON has backed off it. And so they come and say, this is what we want to do. And we would sort of look at the charter and look at our schedule and what time we might have and say, well, I think right now we're just not going to get into heavy metal mm -hmm. because we don't feel it is something that is really a need that we need to get at, go after, that people can get in other places still. Um, and can they appeal that decision? Can they? I suppose they could write to uh, the board of directors if if they choose. On most of those issues, I think the board backs up their committees and their staff. I mean, it, mu it must be terribly interesting, just looking through your program guide here, you have um, the Portland Yiddish Hour, and the Mas Musican, La Voz de la Comunidad, and, uh, and a Muslim show. It's, it's sort of like a mini UN over there. <laughs> and um, I would imagine that sometimes there are conflicting groups who resent each other being on. Does, does that ever happen, and how, how do you deal with that? You must have a lot of diplomatic skills. Uh, sometimes it's dealt with well and sometimes it's not. That's all I can say for that. And certainly lots of people would rather have better time than, than what they perceive they have. Maybe someone has a program at 10 o'clock on a Sunday morning and they think, oh, I'd rather be at 10 o'clock Sunday night. I'll have more listeners. And they might have whatever internal justification for wanting to do that. But that means, well, we've got to kick off the people who are on at 10 o'clock at night. And so it's this you know, give and take. Is there, when somebody gets a, a program that, that's a series, do they have a, a certain number of, of segments of that series and then they're off or they can be bumped or, or uh, they have it eternally until they There is, uh, um, at this point, something of a grandfather clause at KBU that uh, once you're on the air, you're sort of on until you make some grievous errors or leave town huh. or decide to leave your show. Right. I mean, just like volunteers here, people's, because it is a volunteer activity and because it does take a good amount of time to do a show, to prepare for it, even if it's just playing records, you need to think about the records you want to play. So people's lives change and a lot of people may come to the station loving classical music and because they're involved with cable, listen to the punk rock show and decide that punk rock is where it's at and then stop doing a classical music show. So people come in and out and I'm not sure what our percentage is, but maybe of the volunteers that come to the station, 30, 40, or 50 percent are there for a short time. Mm -hmm. Explore what radio is like. I think most of us still grow up in a society where we've never touched radio equipment or TV equipment. It's always something that we haven't participated in. So a lot of people come down, get involved in the show, just to see what it's like. How do you get across? I noticed that in cable television, that people are so scared of television, anything technical production, that it, it's hard to get them to accept the fact that, that they can do it. Um, do you have the same experience in, in radio, and how do you get around that? 
That's a tough well, one. I think probably the we're alike in that we're not sitting there on the radio and we're not sitting here tonight being real professional, being um, any, all that much different from anybody else that we might know. So when you turn on KBU, you hear a regular person. You hear them maybe talking about a type of music that you and I don't know about. The man who does the bebop show, Don Manning, lives for bebop music, and I don't know a thing about it. But he's a regular guy, and you could tell he's a regular guy. And that helps demystify it. Mm -hmm. um, the fact that we're out there in the community sometimes doing live broadcasts, or that when we do a pledge drive to try and raise money over the air, anything goes, um, really helps people realize how very regular. And the fact that you can walk in. Mm -hmm. A lot of people walk in just to see it, and we show them the broken down equipment and the things that don't work, as well as all the records, but it's very accessible. And in fact, some people walk in, we put them right on the air. That's right. <laughs> Sounds like here. Um, your new building is where and what's happening with the new building? Well, it might, and I'm not sure, it might be the fourth time, the fourth home for KBU. Is, uh, I wasn't here when it started, but I understand it started in somebody's garage. Now the station is at 20 Southeast 8th in a 5,000 square foot warehouse, and which was renovated about three years ago for what we believe are our ideal studios. And we've rented it for four years, and we're about to buy that building. Hmm. And at this point, it's much, it's extremely less expensive to buy the building than it is to ever move a radio station again, emotionally and financially. I mean, having been around as a volunteer through a few of the different homes and just seeing that moving a whole radio station, having to rebuild studios each time, drained so much of the resources and just energy from all the people that I, I shudder to think how good we'd be if we never had to move. And so we're hoping now to make this a permanent home, purchase this building, have a, a real long-term stability with that, and move ahead to a better and better program. That's a pretty big undertaking, buying the building. How, right. Is that a special fundraising? It's a very, yeah, very special fundraising. It costs $100,000 to buy this building, which people tell me is not expensive for a building like mm -hmm. this. We've been real lucky. We've raised $50,000 from in contributions anywhere from one dollar to five thousand um, dollars. Four foundations have given us contributions and one foundation has given us a loan which we'll have to repay over the next five years but what it means is that we can buy it now. Wow, we so you're going to be able to buy it outright? We're going to uh, buy it and then we'll have definitely five years of bills to pay, right. mortgage I guess. And so if anyone wants to see KBU in their own home you can write right. to the KBOO 20 Southeast Dave. Send your checks. All right. Address right. to KBOO. Um, programming issues. You, you stress, you know, at least in the programming, there's a very nice balance and there seems to be a certain emphasis on local artists and local people. Um, again, how do you maintain that? If somebody comes in with a, a tape they've produced someplace else and, and wants to play it, how do you tell them no or do you just tell them no? Well, we'll listen to them. And also, as, as we talked, most of the programmers, I'd say 99% of the people you hear on the radio on cable are mm -hmm. volunteers. So they're investing their time and energy into their programs and have quite a bit of autonomy as to what they're going to play. So say if you come to me, oh, this is a tape that I made, I'm a musician, I'm visiting town, I'd like you to play it. I say, well, I can run it by some of the programmers. I might like it, and I can say, oh, this sounds pretty good. Why don't you check it out for your show? If they don't want to play it, that's you know, their prerogative. Mm -hmm. uh, now, there's no censorship involved uh, in well, the programming at all, or beyond that, you can't swear on the. I mean, there are certain laws that we have to okay, abide. But those are FCC restraints. Right. right. Uh, the only censorship uh, is that you should try and do the best show you can. But and this show we started also. with tonight right. is all is a show that encourages people to send their homemade music tapes mm -hmm. in. Essentially, it's called the Northwest Music Show every Thursday night. And they, he plays tapes that people mail in. Um, some are very slickly produced. We, at the very beginning, we were listening to a record by the Crazy Eights, which has just been released in this nice production. But then we also get basement tapes from people that have you know, just put together something in their house and send it in. Right. 
And I bet we were, we were playing the Crazy Eights when they were sending in cassettes. Probably. Because a lot of local artists, musicians and any other type of artist, I mean, they start here, there are local resources, and a lot of them can't bring us a produced record. They bring mm -hmm. us the beginnings. They can't pr come to us and say, here's my play that's going to open on Broadway. Here's my play that's opening in Portland in this small theater down here. Mm -hmm. your, your volunteers seem to be incredibly loyal. Uh, I know a lot of them personally who have been there for years and years and years. Um, how, do you, how do you do it? How do you, why do people volunteer for KBOO? You know, I did for a long time because there were certain things that I felt needed to get out that the media in general was not doing. I was working on public affairs programming and cable was an outlet that, that was available. It was, uh, they were open to the access and I felt a reward doing it. I was you know, getting my, myself and the message that I wanted out onto the air and so that felt very good. People also, I think, volunteers rightly feel a certain amount of ownership, not only of the program that they do, but of the radio station. They're members of the foundation. They have a say in what goes on there. And so that helps build that loyalty when people feel a real vested interest in what's happening. Um, there are at least several people who have gone on from KBU into careers in radio, Certainly. aren't there? A yeah. lot of alumni. Mm -hmm. On radio, some radio stations here in Portland and some in other cities. And some people, after careers in radio elsewhere, come to come cable. To cable. Come back to cable. And that's the most interesting kind, because you get people coming out of a commercial background, and they get to cable, and it's just so free form and, and wide open, and they're just blown away that you can really do these kinds of things, and that people with little or no professional training, but with a knowledge of a subject, and then a, a low level, a certain amount of training, can do quite good work. I love it. I think radio is much more accessible than television. Um, which reminds me of a point. You know, are you over uh, flooded with programming? Are there more programming ideas and people around than you have room for in, in a 24-hour day on one station? Well, I'm not sure. Well, well I, I was going to say, I mean, do you realize that, that there are, that access, for instance, is, is a potential? I know when the franchising process was going through, KBU put in a big proposal to use access, and um, there's supposed to be, if it survived, a, a, the capability for doing radio over the, over the cable. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know if that would be of use to you, but I'd love to see KBU push mm -hmm. that and, and use uh, cable for, as maybe a, a second KBU station sort of We thing. certainly get proposals frequently, and we're not always able to meet them and get them on the radio. Mm -hmm. And there are almost always some demands for more airtime from particular programming groups at the station, uh, so that I... I think in one sense, yes, there, there's always programming that we would like to put on, but there's just not enough hours in the day. Mm -hmm. uh, we have done some things with PCA, in fact. Uh, we were doing, part of, as part of the Northwest Music Show we talked about earlier, once a month broadcasting a local band simulcast on the radio and TV. That went on for a little while. And then just some of the logistics got too tough. Um, city Council, you're still doing still city, do city Council, Council meetings, one of my favorite things. To some people to. think it's the most wonderful program imaginable because it is live, unrehearsed, right. uncensored, and, um, and sometimes very um, outrageous. outrageous and sometimes plain out boring, but it's, it's your city at work yeah, or not I, at work, I whatever you I believe. It's one of the finest services. It's right. very controversial on the broadcast of it on KBU for a couple of reasons. One, KBU broadcasts way beyond just Portland. So the Portland City Council is not so interesting to the people who listen in Salem, mm. really. Um, and also people think that some people don't really want to hear um, about this woman over here who wants to build a, a wing on her house or, or someone else's hedges who aren't cut. Um, but many people believe it's, it's the access. It's making sure that people in the city can keep an ear to what the city's doing. 
How about local news? I know in the past there have been some attempts to do a local news show on KBU. Is that the new news show you're doing, the, the Radio Zine, is not a local news show, is well, it, or is it? The Radio Zine, which is our morning talk show slot, mm -hmm. it's Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday talk shows, are primarily local. I mean, I'd say what, 70 to 80 percent of the content are uh, interviews with people in the area or maybe speakers coming through the area talk about health issues or environmental issues particular to the Northwest. Mm -hmm. uh, talking about with, we have a program on our Tuesday show which is more literary and arts oriented where we've been interviewing Northwest authors and having them read from their works that's been going on for the last oh, few months now. Yeah. Then our evening newscast, we use a couple of outside services. We use the BBC and we use Pacifica. Uh, Pacifica is a network of other community stations around the country. And we supplement that with our own local uh, reporting. But reporting is a very, as I said earlier, labor intensive. It takes a mm -hmm. lot of time and energy to do good local reporting. If you're going to really report on a story, you have to follow that beat. You have to know that. You have to have daytime hours when you can call people up and follow a story through. Mm -hmm. And for volunteers, that's very difficult. But this incarnation of the exactly. local news just hit their second anniversary mm. of having a half hour newscast Monday right. through Friday from 4.30 to 5 for two years running. And since it is very labor intensive and capital intensive, uses a lot of tape, field equipment, um, and a lot of people. You know, David said it before, maybe six or seven people might be working against a deadline to get this newscast on at 4.30. And we're finding that in terms of listener support that it's very well received. During our last pledge drive, the number of pledges in support of the news was much higher than it had ever been. Hmm. So it says to us, people want to know um, not only what you see on the 6 o'clock news, which is maybe top 40 news, but they want to hear some of the other things that are going on and some different perspectives. That's great. We still have a few minutes left here. Uh, future, what big things coming up in the future? Stereo, AM? Well, we're not going to go AM. We are uh, very shortly going to be the first radio station broadcasting uh, with a digital signal transmitting between our studio and our transmitter. So, uh, and hopefully, in the future, we will go stereo. But that's all back in Washington, D.C., in hearings. So, But we're closer than we've ever been. I know people have heard this for years. years but yes. we had uh, not only a local issue to deal with, but got caught up in a national issue, which will be resolved soon. Great. Well, that's about all the time we have today. Is there one last thing you wanted to say about KBU before we go? Tune us in. Tune us in. 90.7. 90 and if people want to say send money, which I hardly encourage, the address is? 20 Southeast 8th, Portland, Oregon, 97214. 90.7 Radio, I encourage you to tune it in and listen to KBU and go down there and take a workshop and do your own radio program. KBOO, Community Radio for Portland, Oregon. Um, stay tuned for the next half of the show coming up in just a minute. This is Bob Flug saying good night. <laughs>